Personal Power, People Positive, The Community of Connection. This is the Bob Jeswald Show. Tracy, interesting, mama number two. You're going to be a mama again. And we talk about moms and how important it is for your, your mental well-being to, to get time off. You, you mentioned your your first child. You know, this mm-hmm. time we're having a boy. Congratulations. Yep. Thank you. But and- it, you're, you're going on number two. You mentioned something that was pretty interesting to me. You said the 12 weeks thing. <laughs> What did women do, do you think, back in the days, like your mom, my mom, you know, they didn't have 12 weeks off, you know, do you get paid, I, none of my bit, but you, I guess you get paid now, right? Some of you do, some some people do. Yeah, I mean, paid. you have a certain portion of it that's paid time off. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, it was just important to me to be at home with my daughter. I've waited 38 years. Well, at that point in time, I waited 36 years to yeah. be a mom, and I was super excited about it, so I didn't want to miss anything, so. I was 40 on my last child, so don't worry. I'll be 39 on this one. Totally cool. Nothing wrong with that. Yep. You're mature. You get it all done. You know what's I happening. Don't, I could not imagine doing this when I was younger. There you go. I could not imagine. Why do you say that? It's just the best thing, but it's also the hardest thing. Like, it's tiresome. It's exhausting. You try to do it all. You give it all. Like, to be a mom and a wife and work full time and a sister, a friend, a daughter. Like, then where in the world do you find in mo- your own time? You know? So, it's just it's just a lot. So, it's a lot to make sure that little human stays alive and healthy and fed. <laughs> Amen to that. And you, te- you keep yourself in great shape. You started this podcast off. I don't even know if we're recording, Lewis. We were recording when I had her stand up. Or she, she goes, Bob, thanks a lot. You're calling me fat. Why do women always say, I think pregnancy is a wonderful thing. Well, I've ran my whole entire life. Right. Like, I've always been a runner. Mm-hmm. And um, we got a Peloton during COVID. And so I've always been, you know, really big into exercise and physical fitness. It just, I sleep better. I'm healthier. I'm nicer. I feel better. Um, You know, it's it's not necessarily being skinny. I always say I want to be fit rather than skinny. Um, But right now I'm just in that weird phase where it kind of just looks like, well, did she drink a lot of beer? (laughs) Did she eat too many burgers? (laughs) Like, what that, stage is it in? So. That, what is that little bump in the air? The, the, right. it, but, but I wouldn't have noticed it. It's the way you dress. If, if anyone wants to know, Tracy, you're, 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 I think you're about my height, maybe a little taller. I'm 5'9", five, 5'10", five, in a good day. Yep. How tall right are you? Right at 5'9". Five, 5'9". Five, so you're, yep. you're, you're more than average. Most women are yes. probably low yes. five foot something. So uh, you have the height. I don't know if you always wear high heels. Do you? Or no, I got on tennis shoes. Maybe you just look tall today. I don't know why. Yeah. And you you wear it well. You're, you're slender. And you got uh, a long dress on, and you stood up. I wouldn't have noticed anything until you pressed against your. D- I to certainly make a point. appreciate but that. But you don't look fat. So when I said you look, you go, I'm pregnant, Bob. Can't you tell? And I go, no, you don't look pregnant. Me. So then you're saying I'm fat. Well, it's just almost like I'm aware of it, yeah. and I don't know if other people notice. Right. So I'm like, well, do I tell them? Do I not tell them? It's just that. You what know? is your? What is your? Not to get too personal. Does your husband like you pregnant? He loves Good me for, being pregnant. He's like Bob Jeswald. My wife, every she was pregnant. On both her times, mm-hmm. and I couldn't get enough of it. And I, I'm not getting, too, but it's true. I, it, I think it's the most beautiful thing. It, why? Why do people? I couldn't imagine anyone even being turned off by that. I know. Well, it's the weirdest thing to me because you know your body totally transforms. I mean, yeah, this literally. Is cool. It's neat. Ever yeah. since I had a do- my daughter two years ago, like things just never go back to the same. Like it's just different. Mm-hmm. And you know, you become a mom, and you know, I mean, I nursed my daughter for 13 months, mm-hmm. and. But my husband literally, he's wanted us to have another baby since she was six months old. So he's like, yeah, he was like, so, yeah, he, he's, he wants experience. Yeah, That's yeah. Cool. And That's so cool. he loves, we went to the beach last week and um, we were wandering around the beach and, you know, in our bathing suits and everything. And like, he's all about the pregnant Tracy, and yeah. I'm, which is great for me as a female and my confidence. Right. Um, but yeah, he is, he is that man that loves a pregnant woman. So it do doesn't I. matter who, who it is. He's always like, oh, that, that lady's pregnant. She's beautiful. I, Absolutely. I mean, there's yeah. no question about it. It's kind of like having your own, your, it's neat to see. Cause you know, like I'd see my wife before and I, and it's hard to see, I see pictures before I say, Oh, I look so good. Cause I was younger and you know, whatever. Right. But she, you, it, it does good things for you. Even physically, it's good for a woman to be pregnant. And, and I feel my heart goes out to women because I know a lot of women can't get pregnant. You know, you yeah. hear those stories, but there's always a way. And it's all, another podcast, another time. But when you think about this, there's ways can always adopt and it's hard to tell somebody my wife had trouble getting pregnant it's a true true story in fact uh, let me just back up a bit I'll just tell you what happened I put my foot in my mouth we were um 
Teresa was trying to get pregnant. I have a child from a previous marriage. Of course, my daughter, Brittany, and she's wonderful. I got three grandkids now, which is another beautiful thing. I mean, you got, you got them from 10 years old all the way from a newborn. So Liza's our last one. She says she's closing shop. She's saying, <laughs> Brittany, I can't believe Brittany's the same age as you when you're telling me. So oh, my, yeah. my daughter's right there with you. My son-in-law is 40, though. He's a little older. And uh, he goes, geez, I can't believe I'm 40 having a third. I said, I was too. What the heck are you talking about? I had 40. We had <laughs> Sophia at 40. And um, uh, Eva at 39. And, and or was like going almost on 41 with Eva. I mean, with Sophia. Uh, anyway, you know where I mean. I'm 58. Somewhere now, so around whatever. there. So, whatever. so So the great thing is, is that Teresa, we were trying, and she just kept getting pregnant. And then two, three months, miscarriage. Mm-hmm. The worst one was three and a half, I think, and, and it was really devastating. Mentally, it took a toll on her. It really did. Oh, yeah. So it's I was, hard. So I got mad at Teresa one day, and she's probably getting mad. I'm saying this, too. Like you say, your husband's going <laughs> to be embarrassed from the beginning. But the fact that, but it is, this is reality. I told you, you know, you have your faith. Teresa, just pray in it. I go, don't think about it. Well, we did the fertility stuff. Mm-hmm. Not saying we're going to try to do that. We didn't do that, meaning to see if I had any issues. Right, and sure. I, I clearly didn't. I had to go do my thing, and she came up, mm-hmm. and she was so embarrassed about it. I'm like, eh, <laughs> of course, I'm a guy, and I'm like, eh, whatever. Whatever, it's, have, normal. it's, no, it's normal. This is easy. <laughs> so uh, everything came out okay, literally. And then <laughs> it didn't make You know what I'm saying. I love it. You love it. And, and Teresa, she was getting test after test, and we couldn't figure out what the heck's wrong with her. Right. Okay, now she's French-Canadian. Listen, women, to this. This is true. I didn't know this. Because she has some French Canadian genes in her, she has a. We found out from a really good. I can't remember. Uh, he was a specialist fertility and all this stuff down in Phoenix, Arizona. Mm-hmm. He wasn't even with the Mayo Clinic or anything like that out of uh, out of Fountain Hills. He was in the Scottsdale area, and he was really good. And he was very simple about it. He goes, "I think we're overthinking this." After weeks and weeks of trying different things and wondering, he wanted a. a he wanted a genealogy thing, wanted a little bit to know who she was, her background. I'm like, where the heck is this going? You know, yeah, well, she's half Mediterranean. I mean, she's Sicilian like me. I I, I have uh, Sicilian and Italian and, and Lithuanian. You know, I found out my mom's mom was Lithuanian, but I have more Italian in me, I guess you would say. But Greek, I found out my dad got Greek, got Sardinia, North Africa, That's Mediterranean. Why you're always tan. That's why I'm all That's tan. Why you're all always I'm a tan, tan man. That's always. right. <laughs> I'm a tan man all year round. So, so what's interesting is that he found out because she had Canadian genes that she had a factor five gene. What does that mean? It's a blood clotting disorder. Since she was half French Canadian, is her dad, who's a war oh hero here, gosh. he's a Ranger Hall of Famer too. He's passed, but he's phenomenal. Uh, Joe Gagnon helped form the three battalions, but he's a great guy. His daughter, he passed that gene down, likely. And they did all these tests oh on that, and gosh. she did. It's a blood. And what's scary about it, if she ever did like birth control for a long time, it could have. She was running her risk of higher risk of becoming getting a blood clot or oh getting my gosh. It or something. And she bad. never even knew. Never knew it. So she tells her sisters right away. Yeah. So all her sisters have had children. Her oldest only had one child. She's done. She's shop has been closed a long time. So she, she's she's all done. And, but her other sisters are like, oh my gosh, this is good. She's they're they're ahead of us because Teresa's yeah. the baby and. She, you know what he told her? You know what the remedy was? After, instead of spending tens of thousands of dollars, you know what he said? Oh, gosh. Take an aspirin a day. A baby aspirin. A baby aspirin a day. And, and do your it. thing when you want to do it. Just go in a quiet place. We went to San Diego, I think, one week. I was at a weather conference out there. And he, just do your thing and don't think about it. Stop Take a baby it. aspirin. And she was pregnant before you No know. way. And we didn't say anything to anybody till like, Five or I think yeah. she waited six months, but Teresa's is really short. She's five mm-hmm. too, so she really started to show. So it was you had a, it was mm-hmm. an elephant in the room. It's like, mm-hmm. come on, what's wrong with you? You drinking too much beer, right? Or or, or you right. got a baby in there? Something's going on. So so she did in it uh, healthy, and then baby number two, Sophia was like boom, and like yeah. you said, fertility wise was quick right after that second one. Yeah, well, you just don't hear about mis- miscarriages often, um, but I had a miscarriage in November. And so this time it was the same thing. It was like, well, I'm not going to tell anybody. And this time we kept it from our family and everything sure. um, for a long time. How far and were so, you in from that, I'm asking? When I had a miscarriage, yeah. I was eight weeks. Wow, okay. So we went in. Months, yeah. yeah, we went in for the confirmation appointment, found out we were pregnant, and then went back two weeks later for the first ultrasound, and there wasn't a heartbeat. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, you just feel so alone. And as a woman, like, I mean, my poor husband, he wanted to do everything in the world to be there to help me and help me through it. But he also just didn't know what that looks like. And, you know, and I didn't know cause I'd never experienced mm-hmm. a miscarriage until then. And then you start to wonder, well, gosh, I, are we okay with just having one kid? Are we not like, you know, then you just start to kind of question everything. And then, right. um, when we ended up getting pregnant again, six months later, I was like, well, we're not telling a soul. And we didn't, we didn't tell anyone at all. I told one of my very close friends. And then other than that, we didn't tell anyone until 
I think I was probably 10 weeks. Smart. Um, and we told just our immediately family, immediate family then. And then we still haven't told hardly anyone. So if anybody's listening, they're probably they're gonna, gonna be like, find holy out. cow, what? Well, we're gonna be promote <laughs> when this when you're listening to this podcast, it had already been promoted on TV and local. So people are gonna yeah. hear Tracy Green are gonna, oh my god, Tracy Green, she's pregnant. She's pregnant. She's pregnant. She's pregnant. She's so pregnant. it's not a secret. We just right. haven't told everyone. Right. Um, everything's looking really good and healthy. And but as a woman, it's hard to go through, it's hard to explain it. You feel alone, you feel like what have I done wrong? What can I do different? And it's just, it's a really weird thing to go through and it's super hard to process. So, um, I can't imagine how a husband feels trying to support. So did your OBGYN tell you that Trace, this is normal having a miscarriage? She did. She said, um, she said they're called God's miracles Yes. and, um, that it's just more and more common. They, you know, they say one in four, you just don't really ever want to be that one, that statistic. Um, and then, you realize that a lot of the people you know are, and it's just not talked about often. And I right. just feel like that if it was more common to talk about, it would probably help a lot of women through it more often. I agree. It was so tough with Teresa. Like I started telling you, I was like not preaching to her, say, honey, you have your faith. Just That's what my it. husband kept telling me. I kept me. telling her, you're, you're over, you know, and easier said husband. than done. But what do you think I said after that? I go, look, we can always adopt. And I thought I was going to get daggers. I was like, not that there's anything wrong with adoption. No, absolutely. You, and you should. I mean, there were a lot of women out there. It's mm-hmm. the most beautiful thing. Remember, there's a biological mom and dad. And then if the biological mom and dad are not right. there for the child, the, the person raising a child is the dad or the mom. Oh, I, 100%. I, you know, people forget that. Yeah. I was adopted, but I don't really know my parents. Well, you know what? Your parents are the ones who raised you. Yeah. It, 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 if, yeah. you know, whatever. But there is... As a, as a woman, and I, I can respect it now because I've been through it tw- with two, because my ex-wife, of course, Jill with Brittany, and then, and then my wife, Teresa, I've been mm-hmm. with most of my life uh, for, for sure, 30 plus years. Um, you know that, you know, that's, the, that, that's an important thing in a woman. Oh, and, yeah. and you feel it and you see it and, and you're part of that when the baby's born. It's, oh, it's yeah. incredible. I, 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 was, I had the privilege to clip all three umbilical cords. Yeah, all three my husband my cut yeah. my daughter, our daughter's umbilical yeah. cords. So. Three girls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Two yeah. grandbaby girls and one grandson now. So oh, that, yeah. But that's coming your way soon. You guys Ooh. will be experiencing that. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> you got a few years. Uh, it'll, it'll have. Tell your, I know. She's two. <laughs> but the way your husband sounds like, it sounds like he likes to get things rolling. So oh, he's probably he's already, he's already thinking, come on, grandkids, right? <laughs> he's all about it. Yeah. He's all about it. So. <laughs> so no, I see you light up, Tracy. I think it's great. Because seeing you on another end, because you are very physically fit and active, what do you what do you think about um, what do you think what do you think about women who just can't have children? Is it, you, your heart goes out because I know not being able is there something? What is the feeling? I guess I never really even talked to my wife about this, but what's that feeling you have when you get pregnant? I mean, what is it that makes it so? It's such a weird feeling. Like I tell people all the time, like I didn't get married until I was thirty five, mm-hmm. and we didn't have our daughter until I was thirty six, and so I was at that point where I was telling my my parents, I was like. I'm going to have a child one way or another, whether I go to a sperm bank and have a donor or if I adopt (laughs) a child, like I want to be a mom. I feel like God created me to be a mother. And it was just something I was always passionate about. And, but I was at that point in life where I wondered, will I ever get to experience that? Like, I mean, so I have six nieces and nephews and they were just my world. I mean, my sisters both are older than me. And I was there. I got to cut my niece's umbilical cord when Great she was feeling, born. feeling, isn't it? It's so And hard. I got to watch my sister deliver her. And, I mean, it was just the most miraculous thing. Like, and, you know, it's, it's just crazy. So, you know, I went to that point where I felt like, will I ever get to experience that? And so I know what it feels like. Um, but then when you become a mom, it is the weirdest thing. You cannot describe how you love that little human. Like, I've always loved my husband. He was actually my first love in high school. We departed, went our separate ways for 15 years, got married several years later. And, you know, I just, my love for him, I feel like I can explain it. You know what I mean? Right, right. I can tell you how I love my sisters. I can tell you how I love my parents. I cannot explain how I love that little two-year-old. And so it's just, I mean, no matter what, and when I, is, am I giving her enough? Am I doing enough for her? Can I be more present? You know, all these things go through my head. And my husband tells me every day, he's like, you give her the world and you just pushed me to the side. <laughs> hey, I'm with you. What's your husband's first name again? Blake. Blake, I'm with you, brother. I am with you, brother. And so, you know, I just, it, um, you know, for those women that can't have a child, like, I'm, I don't have words for that because I don't know. I thought I felt like I knew what that was going to be like. Um, 
And I just felt empty. I felt like there was a part of me missing. And so, you know, for those that can, I hope that they can find a way that they can have a child or have children present in their life. Like I said, my nieces and nephews, I never missed a ball game. I went to all the school activities. I picked up from school. I dropped off from school. That's amazing. I went on field trips. I mean, I did all the things with them until I had a daughter, and now she consumes my life. So I tried to do as much as I can with my nieces and nephews still. Um, but, you know, I just... It's the coolest, most unexplainable thing I have ever experienced in my life. I love the way you just described that. That's why I wanted to ask you that because I wanted weird. to get the most, the most honest yeah. feeling in the presence. If you can't feel it, just I could feel your <laughs> energy. And as you're saying, <laughs> yeah, it, it it's just so good. It's like she, it's you the light best up the room. thing in the whole what do you world. You think Lewis is feeling this too over? Oh, what, yeah, what Lewis is doing? He's not texting and not paying attention to <laughs> you. Here's what he's really doing. Right, right, Lewis, am I right? Lewis right now is actually, he's my producer. Okay. And he's going to be moving on, really, too. We're going to miss him. He's oh, going no. to Tampa, Florida. You hear this? He's moving up, and that's what happens. Uh, we had our previous producer before him, which was Dylan, and he moved up. Yeah. And now now uh, Lewis is doing an exceptional job, built on a success tremendously, and now he's moving up. So what's he doing on his phone over there? He's actually quoting you. He's texting to find good moments that we can oh, no. share on Facebook, Twitter, what? or Instagram, where you can Mom, get your I podcast. Did not sign a contract for this. <laughs> little, I was just, little did you know, Tracy, this morning. I might have told you that I was she busy should, at work today. She should have never said this. This is how the conversation started yesterday. Tracy, I need you for something. Oh, yeah, sure, Bob. Yeah, I'm pretty free all day tomorrow. You just call me I whenever. I did not know I was so getting into this. I called her whenever, and uh, she goes, yeah, sure, Bob, I'll meet you at the station. Literally, I know, she, and look at gonna, me. I I stopped going to get lunch for you, She's and now so you're doing Thank this you. to me. This means a lot. Yeah. No, I'm you know just what? kidding. I'm having fun. I know you are, and it shows. I mean, everything you do, and it, so people know, too, you're locally, uh, many big cities around are listening to this podcast. Columbus, Georgia has the also has the luxury of having a nonprofit it's called Uptown Columbus. Yep. And it, what Uptown does, it's great because you guys not only try to encourage businesses coming in to get real estate movement, um, that's one position that your CEO yep. does, but- you're really heavily engaged in events yep. and many are free and some of them you do have to pay, but most of your events are free and, and you take a lot of pride in that and you rely on, you know, weather and whatnot and, and, and you're, you're energized. I see you out there and you've oh, you yeah. got a lot to do. So as a former runner and doing that, how does that play a role in that? I mean, I think it's a good fit for you, isn't it? Oh yeah, I absolutely love it. It's diff something different every day. Right. Um, so before this role, I was with Chick-fil-A for 13 years. So I traveled around, did grand openings and opened restaurants all across the country, had the time of my life. Um, but like I said, once I, my husband and I got back together again after that's all awesome. those years, it's meant to be. Um, meant that's to be. right. Um, I wanted to find something local cause I knew we were really passionate about starting our family and, you know, and our fam my husband's family lives here. My family lives here. Um, and we're both just big, big family people. And so um, when I was looking at positions, Uptown Columbus was hiring for a director of events and marketing. And I was like, man, that's right in my alley. Like, I love people. Um, I love to be out and about, love doing things in the community. I've grown up in Columbus my entire life. Mm -hmm. um, I have two older siblings. They've both grown up in Columbus. So it's kind of like that small town feel. I've watched the community evolve over the years. Um, and it's just really exciting that now I get to be a part of the really fun events that we do. I mean, I remember going to some of these events when I was in high school. And um, and now I get to be in charge of those. So it's super cool um, to finally be in, in this spot. That's so cool. Cool. It's, it was cool to think that you were probably in high school when I when, when I was on TV early years. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cool feeling that I'm working with you. Yeah, I know Blake fun. listens to us. He likes he gives us play by plays like a lot of times folks listening. <laughs> I'll go live with Tracy just because there's an event going on and we want to know the weather and I'll yep. be down in Uptown Columbus. Her and I will chit chat <laughs> and Blake will come in. He'll he'll text her. Hey baby, look great. Hey, you're looking uh, good. Yeah. Well, so, my daughter thinks it's the coolest, the coolest thing, thing ever. Coolest thing at mom's on oh, TV. Yeah. So she'll be cool when she's listening to this podcast, or you can watch it. You can stream it. It, yeah, she TV? gets confused when I'm with her, though, because if, like, if I'm yeah. on her and they're showing a clip from, like, the news today and right. they show it at 7 a.m. tomorrow morning, Still at that age, like, she's how did you do that? super confused because yeah. she's looking at me like, but you're right here. Yeah, how are how you there? Isn't that cool? <laughs> to see, now, that's another component of being a mom yeah, it's is fun. experience the innocence and in how a child is developing. Oh, you know, you see unreal. all this stuff. It's the it's coolest cool. thing. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. You have an infectious voice. I love your voice. You, you got very so distinct. Raspy. I love that you have a raspy voice. It's, it's, it's you, Tracy. Yeah, it's me. Um, it used to bother me. I hated it when I was younger. So people, you had, that's what I was going to ask I've had you. this my whole life. It's a cute, it's, it's a very, I don't know. everyone 
Everybody has distinct voices. So weird. But it's so you. It wouldn't be, you couldn't be, if you didn't have that, it would not be, tra- it wouldn't be the same. It's the weirdest thing. I don't know where it came from. I mean, I just, I remember <laughs> stories, even when I was in middle school. Like, I remember back to middle school when people would say, are you sick? No, why do you think I'm sick? Well, your voice is raspy. I'm like, no, it's always like this. <laughs> like, and when I am sick, it's even raspier. But it is kind of fun. I mean, when I'm around other people, they're like, I heard your voice. I knew it was you. Was, yes. Um, so, you know, I guess it's just God made me me and this is it. But yeah, I've had it for as long as I could possibly know. Amen to that. I think that's really good. <laughs> how, how long have we been talking? Just out of curiosity, Louis. Oh, I just curious. I, I just want to see, because when you're with Tracy, time goes like that. That's because really we're having so much, so much fun. fun. It's so much fun. 21 minutes. Imagine See? if we were this good. And, and you have not eaten yet. No, I'm doing great. You're doing good? You're starving me and a baby, but I hope you're okay with okay, that. Okay, that's also, you're <laughs> eating You're eating for two now. Oh, my gosh. See how that is? I, <laughs> I've really, I just, I feel like I've been eating pretty normal so far. Nothing's been too crazy that's yet. A, what high school did you go to? Here? I went to Jordan. You went to Jordan? You were Class Jordan? Class of 2002. Oh, yeah. Jordan. Mrs. Jordan High School, Well, you baby. know what? I wasn't back here yet then. I was here in a... Uh, I was here in the early, well, you could have watched me in the early 90s. I was here, and then I left, and then I came back in 06. Okay. So you were already yep. out of school, so yep. that makes sense. Yep, I was, um, I graduated from Columbus State in 2007. Yeah, I was here already yeah. two years back yeah. here at that point. Man, you were a college student, you weren't watching me. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I'm not watching him. <laughs> so I, I got to tell you, it's being, all this coming together shows anybody or anybody listening First of all, you, you chose to be a mom a bit later, and yep. that's acceptable today. It makes sense. I My wife did it. it yeah. she, she's going to shoot me every time she, I bring it up because people are going to figure out her age that she works with because exactly. she doesn't want anyone to know. But the fact is we did. And I'm telling you, it's a different world. Why not have your crap together, Your your get your finances, get your love yeah. life together? There's so much you got to get from yourself to get out of the way. Oh, yeah. Start your life at 35. That's perfect. Oh, yeah. Well, that's what I tell all my coworkers. Um I have a girl um, who works with me. She's 22, and I tell her all the time, I'm like, go and live your life. Like, travel, hang out with your friends, do all the fun things, do all the crazy things, like, live life. Um, Because life is hard. Once you stop and you get married and, you know, figuring out how to, that was our thing, too, is, you know, we were 35 when we got married, moving in together, and it's like, Oh my gosh, I've lived alone for all these years. Right. How am I supposed to deal with you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so what am I supposed to do in that situation? Right. And What's... so it's um it's a challenge, but it's the best challenge ever. So it's it's hard, but it's exciting to to be in this moment too. And so I just encourage people to don't feel the pressure of you got to do it all when you're so young because right. you know, you can be pregnant when you're in your 30s and you can deliver healthy babies and you can be healthy and it's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with it. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. And there's yep. nothing wrong with doing a little uh, karaoke with Bob Jeswold, right? Hold on, karaoke? Yes, come on. Bob! So, so this is, this is, this is, when you said what is life, you hit the nail. I always, Lewis knows this, I come up oh with something. Gosh. I don't know what the rights, we can't even play the song on here, right? Because I can't do that, but, oh, I can, but I can sing it. I can try oh to. Oh my gosh, what song <clears throat> Okay, is now this it? is going back. You may or may not remember this. The, it goes like this. It, it starts George Harrison of the Beatles when they separated after Sgt. Pepper's The Lonely Heart Club Band. Harrison put this together. Great video, by the way. Look at it. And this one woman, she was with the um, San Francisco Ballet or something like that. She's in the video. from. They did this video like in the early 70s. It's amazing. And it looks like it was done today. It's c- scary. Okay. It's called What Is Life is a song. And it said... Do 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 dun dun do 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 do. It starts like that, and it was a it was actually in Goodfellas with uh, Robert De Niro. Uh, okay, the, yep, the, yep. The late, uh, oh, of course, George Pesci. Yeah, and starring in that, and of course, uh, the one and only the, the late uh, phenomenal uh, actor, which is great, and he just passed away. Do you know who I'm talking about? No, Ray Liotta. I would have never yeah, Ray guessed. Ray Liotta, that. yeah, he was phenomenal. But it says the world keeps spinning. And the days go by, time is precious and so is life. We give to family, we give, cho- and it says we chose our friends, we learn to love and restore again. It says, and, it says, and it'll start to say, the sound goes round for the world to hear, the message from my God is ever so clear. To love the Lord and accept his grace, then heaven will be your final resting place. Absolutely. To live again, dun, 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 in a world of faith. I've never heard this, but I like to it. To know my God is in 
every place. Dun, dun, dun. You see this. God's hand. Dun, dun, this dun, was dun, the dun, Beatles? Dun. Yeah. At work in the world, it was Harrison Solo. Because, okay. you know, every Beatle, when they left separately, it was they all were a success. It didn't matter. Oh, yeah. But anyway, great song, What Is Life, love by that. George Harrison. I didn't I'm do gonna it. I'm going to look that up. I did not do it justice. No, but I love that. You just taught me something new, because so I'm Because you know what? That. Because that's you. I felt that every time. It's good. I don't know what it is. I should have been... Uh, I, I can hear when people say something, I'll find a song that goes with them. So that's your hey, song. Hey, that's a great song. So that I'm happy to be paired with that one. That yes, was a good one. Because of what you did today. You came here, you showed up, you're a trooper. I think if anything, Trace, today, this is just, this is a casual conversation. Yeah. And you are very candid. And I think you should inspire any woman. Well, and Thanks, Any Bob. last words you tell any ladies out there that, that if, even if they can't, they know they just can never be pregnant. And there's a lot of women out there. I know a lot of, a lot of female friends of mine that cannot. They're the greatest aunts, this and that. Yeah. They're, hope isn't lost. I mean, you were, you were an auntie, and you still oh, yeah. are after all those years up to this point. Yeah. But they can, you can adopt. There's so many different things I was an aunt do. for 17 years before I was a mom. It, yeah, yeah. There yeah. you go. There but you I go. say find your tribe. I mean, find your tribe. There's women out there advice. that support you. Um, I have a small group that has women in it and almost every single woman in my small group right now has experienced miscarriage or, um, trying to get pregnant and, you know, had a harder time or is a mom and trying to figure out how to navigate through life and in marriage and doing it all and also finding your independence too. And, um, being a mom is so hard. So give yourself grace. Hey. Find yeah. your tribe. Give yourself Find your grace. Tribe, give yourself grace. Yeah. That's the way it rolls. And read the, and listen to that song you just found. What That's is life good. by George Harrison? Heck yeah! I want you and Blake I to like listen that. to it. Oh, tonight. we're going to. Good, excellent. It's and watch the video. It's on Vimeo, okay. I think, or something. Vimeo okay. has it. It's it's phenomenal. Okay. Phenom- and you'll really it really puts you in that space. She's a ballet dancer, but he, the way he did it, it's just fantastic. Love phenomenal. It. I'm yeah. sure my dad will know exactly what your it is. Dad, your dad He's is, all about your, the Beatles. Your dad will know. He's, yeah. he's my generation, so he'll know. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Good. He's Trace, a big Bob fan. We Oh, is he really? Oh, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. So I just find that out. You're, oh, Bob uh, Jeswald, you're talking about. Yes, So make sure we got the right Bob here. Okay. <laughs> there's <laughs> only one Bob Jeswald. Okay, Come wanna, on. Give yourself wanna, some credit. I just want to be clear on that. That's all. <laughs> but that's good. I'm honored. I'm humbled. This is a good thing. Thanks for being so spontaneous. Yeah, this has been so fun. Do you do this every day? Tracy, no. I do it once a week. I love this. So you'll have to come back. I think people want Tracy to come back you're, you're, <laughs> they better vote they for will. me they will vote for you <laughs> you you have the zest for life america's choice yes <laughs> zest for life you're full of energy and we love you and blake blake's got a good woman and he's a good man i can he tell that he does yes, have he's a, good a good woman man. yes he does hey blake you, you owe me some money brother <laughs> but i hear you on the other side that's I know, right i know what he's talking about i've been there so keep up with beat beat tracy we appreciate you so yeah, much yeah of course thank tracy, you i appreciate you're you you're awesome and let's take a look at tracy or any of these podcasts here iHeart, you can get us on Apple, Audible, Spotify. We are there. Hey, we're at WRBL.com. Did you know that? And YouTube, for crying out loud. So cool. Those are the two video places to see our own Tracy Flowers Green, the beauty of Tracy, and you'll see a light up the room. You put her in your <laughs> living room tonight, she just, she's. Oh, gosh, she, don't her, do that. Too her big. voice, her, everything is infectious. It lights up everybody. And we want to see you on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. In fact, we're going to play some clips, Tracy, that you weren't aware of. Stop it. Yes, and they'll, they'll draw people into our podcast Bob. tonight. I did not sign up for oh, that. Yes, that's her famous line. She did not sign up for this. Oh, yes, you did. Oh, my gosh. You're, you're in trouble. Because you're on the Bob Jeswell you show. You are in trouble. <laughs>